Welcome to my review of Lords of Exile for PC. And this took me around 3 hours 29 minutes to beat. Um, according to the clear screen, it said one hour, but I actually based it on my actual gameplay recordings, though it does include, you know, some piss breaks and stuff like that, so it's not completely accurate, but probably, you know, probably in the three hour range of actual gameplay, but this is on a few different platformers, like, like I said, it's on Switch, you know, uh, PC, it's probably on some other shit too, but here I'm playing it on PC, and this is quite a good Castlevania style uh, game very much in the Castlevania style. Um, I'm, I'm trying to think of the other game. There, there was a, a recent game that was that was kind of like this that was done really well too, um, with blood in the title. It's kind of similar to that, if it comes to me. But as you can see, this is a very Castlevania-like intro, uh, similar to um, the uh, Castlevania on Turbo Duo. Rondu of Blood starts off with a cart scene. Of course, in this one, you don't actually play the cart scene where you're riding on the cart, killing shit. But it is a cool little homage to that to that old game. So in this game, instead of a whip, you have a sword. But, you know, it's a little bit less range, but it is similar to, to Castlevania. Very much Castlevania style. And you got your sub-weapons, so you can throw out your scythes and your, your various little sub-weapons, strolling weapons, bombs... And you got your boss fights where you got to memorize the patterns. And the way the game works is there is no live system. Um, it's basically, you just, when you die, you, you, you respawn at the last checkpoint you got to in the stage. Each stage has several checkpoints. Um, now, when you shut the game off, it does save. You save it in a slot. But the way it works is, I believe, it does save, but you have to redo the entire stage over that you last got to. Which is a bit of an annoyance. Um, if I'm remembering right, I could be off on that, but I think that's how this game worked. I did edit this a little while ago, and I completed this a little while ago, so a little hazy. The, game, the control is a little bit better than Castlevania, obviously. I think you have mid-air jump control, which you don't have in the old Castlevania games. You have double jumps, so they did make the control better, which I think in this case works great. Not so much in that scenario, <laughs> but um, you know, on the, on the overall, I think it, it plays really well. And it's pretty challenging, you know, good challenge. You do have that knockback, which means if you get hit, uh, you won't be able to grab onto a ledge to save your ass, you know. So the, the knockback can be a little bit punishing. Not as punishing as the old Castlevania games, but, you know, you can see that is an issue. So, you know, you, you do have to do well. You have a health bar as well, so you can take several hits. And, of course, your main concern is going to be getting to the next checkpoint that will lock you in. At least until you shut the game off. You know, a little suggestion is just leave the game on in suspend mode on Switch. Or if it's on PC, just shut the TV off and leave the game on until you finish a stage. Once you beat a stage, don't worry about it. You'll, you'll, you'll have your saves, but it's better than redoing the whole stage. Like if you were at the, the stage boss and then you shut the game off and restart it, you know, you're going to have to load up at the beginning of the stage, I believe. So, uh, you know, I'd recommend at least getting to the next stage before you shut it off. Unless you just don't mind, but... Personally, I don't like fucking redoing shit that I beat, but, you know, that's just a fucking... A pet peeve of mine. I mean, I go through a lot of fucking games, but I still have little shit that I don't... That I don't fucking like. So you got some larger enemies. You got smaller enemies. You got all kinds of shit. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, so now here's a boss fight. This one was kind of cool because you're climbing the whole time. So, I thought that was cool. Though there was a safe spot I found to pull some bullshit... And you can pull some bullshit on some of the bosses if you're uh, sneaky with your positioning. I think I found a little safe spot with this boss that made it very easy, which you're going to see here. Most of the bosses were not easy to exploit, and I'm usually pretty good at finding boss exploits, especially in games where I can use safe states to practice efficiently. Of course, I can't do that in this game, but it does let you start right at the boss. You do get checkpoints right before the bosses, so that is very helpful. So, I figured this one out pretty fast that I could kind of sit here. You know, so doing this makes it very fucking easy. And um, so, this boss didn't take me too long. So, I will be covering all this in the tutorial. I don't think I made a tutorial for this one yet because I figured, fuck it, I'm going to beat this game again on the Switch for another kill, you know, because I usually beat multiple versions of games, multiple ports on different consoles and, and platforms. 
to uh, build up my kill list, which is my game's beaten list, which is what I kind of work on all the time. I have a kill quota every month of at least 25 games a month, but I usually go way up, you know, way above it. But, um, yeah, so for me, killing multiple ports is a great way to build that list. I don't really do regional differences too much. Like, I won't beat the, the, the U.S. version of an NES game and then go and do the European version because a lot of times it's like the exact same game with maybe no tweaks. Now, sometimes there's a difference between, you know, Japanese and U.S. versions. Like, one is very, you know, much easier or something. Sometimes I will do those, but I feel like it's kind of a cheap way to build up my kill list, so I don't do it too often. But I will do different versions on a different, you know, I will do the same game on a different console, even though it's identical. So there is a bit of a little loophole there with that, because I'm building out another console list on my on my spreadsheet. So, you know, it's tempting. So I like to do that. But, um, so I will be going through the PC version of this soon, so look out for that. And once I finish that, I'll probably do a tutorial um, based on that version. But I didn't play this game, you know, especially well, but I mean, I beat it. But I, I definitely didn't, you know, it wasn't a tight uh, playthrough of the game. Only in the sections where I really had to learn the fights. So some of the bosses were played pretty well. Like the final boss is, is pretty challenging. But yeah, here you're just seeing some general gameplay. This is the general feel of the game. I mean, you move through the levels. I wanted to give, you know, a, a decent little feel of the game, show a decent chunk of some of the stages. You have a down thrust. You do get more moves, and you get more little perks as you beat stages. It's kind of like Mega Man, almost. Except it's not really, it's usually not new weapons. It's usually like, now you can double jump, or, you know, you, you, you add a new ability or something like that. So it's kind of like that. But occasionally you get stuff like, I think your sword gets doubly strong and, and better range or something. So a little thing, you know, little upgrades, things like that. You get this thing that this surrounding uh, aura, that's kind of cool. So this is one of the bosses, one of the cooler looking bosses, and, and one of the cooler fights. It's more of a positioning thing, just knowing when and where to move. It's a cool fight, and it actually has a second form. Most of the bosses, you know, don't have multi-form aside from like the last boss. So you know that's cool. And I do like the big sprite work, really nice sprite work and lighting with the shimmering light on the uh, the bore. I thought it looked really cool. It's like something that the NES, you know, would do if it was really fucking sharp and had, you know, just fucking better visuals, you know, overall. But it does look a little NES-like. Definitely reminds me of the old Castlevania games, which I love. I, I beat, um, all, well, I beat, yeah, I beat all three of them. I did tutorials of parts one and three on the channel, so if you're interested in Castlevania, check those out. Castlevania 3 was a, a great one to put together, and that's a tough game. That was that was a, that was a tough one. It wasn't easy. Much harder than the first game. But yeah, this game is not as hard as the Castlevania games or anything like that. Not even the first one. So, very fair. You know, you may have to spend a little time learning some patterns and stuff like that. And I will show some of the harder parts in this review, so you will see that in a little bit to give you a taste of, of how challenging the game gets. I do like to show final bosses and shit for these more retro-style games that I like to review. Like I said, I do feel like it kind of shows how the game kind of finishes off and kind of completes the package a little bit. I know, but I know some people consider it spoiler. But uh, I can understand that more for, like, more modern games that have really extravagant, detailed shit. But... I don't know. For me, in these games, I mean, I'll, I'll watch a video of the final boss just to see what to expect before I even play some of these games. So, you know, I'm kind of an asshole like that. So here's where some of the stages that got challenging. So th this was a tough section. This was one of the harder sections. I believe this, these are all, all these clips are from the last stage, including the final boss. So you'll see some challenging stuff. You also have a charge move you can do where you charge your, your, your move and it unleashes like a, a summoner. Or like, not a summoner, but like a helper that you summon to your side and and you can it doesn't really do jack shit except that it can throw out a projectile when you command it to do so by hitting another button or something but uh sometimes you need to use these little helpers to break walls and things so it is utilized pretty well into the gameplay but it's more of like a little side thing it, it, it's a little bit useful but it's not super useful from a offensive perspective but it can help clear stuff out from distance you can pull some bullshit with them by throwing out projectiles from across the whole screen and taking out big enemies that can't reach you. So there, there is some some fun to be had with that. But yeah, this stage was a little tricky. You do have to play pretty well. 
you can't really get hit. If you get hit by anything, you will not be able to, to grip the the gate the uh, the thing that you're climbing. You you won't be able to grip it and save yourself. So you really cannot take any damage throughout this whole section. So that does make it uh, challenging, depending on your your tolerance for these kind of things. But it's really all positioning. It's just memorizing, you know, the the right positions, the safe spots, basically. So you know, while it did take me a few attempts, I, I didn't find it too difficult. But I do play a lot of fucking crazy shit. So that's going to vary. I would say this game is going to present a nice challenge to, to the majority of players. It's going to be a nice challenge for some of the more experienced players that, that, that are good at the Castlevania games. You know, it'll be moderate. Uh, maybe take it three hours like it did for me or something. But And some players I'm sure will beat it faster. But I think for, for, for most players that play these kind of games, it's going to present a decent challenge. You know, just enough, just, I thought it, even for me, I mean, even though it was moderate for me, it had just enough resistance for me to enjoy it. Because I don't really like, well, it depends. I don't always like when games are too easy. I mean, if it's a game that I enjoy, I usually like it to be, like, kind of challenging to give me some resistance. Now, this is the final boss. So, yeah, for me, I, I felt like it had just the, the right amount of challenge, you know. But um, now sometimes I love easy games because I love beating fucking games. So I, I can't say I don't like easy games. But I don't really like games that are long, that are easy. Uh, you know, if it's a, like a fucking five-hour game and it's easy, uh, I get really fucking irritated usually. I mean, it's cool to beat games, but I don't always want to sit through five hours of just easy bullshit. You know, but I mean, not saying I won't do it. I, I've beaten some fucking kids' games, so, you know, I'm not, I'm not above that, but... You know, it's like, I, I do like, for, for like a, a game that's kind of being Castlevania-style action game, I like a little little resistance, but I don't know. I guess I'd be happy either way. You know, it gets on the fucking list, as long as it gets on my fucking kill list. So now, this is a boss that has multiple forms, so now we got the second form. And this boss is pretty tough initially. I mean, you really do have to practice to get the movement patterns down, but it's not bad. Obviously, once you understand how it works, it's the same every time. So you just got to learn it and put a little practice in. And um, hopefully when I make a tutorial, I'm going to be able to detail it. Because, I mean, this would be the main part to make a tutorial on. This was the hardest part of the game. And I had a pretty clean fight with it. I think I only took damage on this second form a little bit. There was one movie did that I never learned how to dodge, where he drops all those things down. It's probably not hard. I just, just never learned it. It's all a matter of just learning, you know, how to dodge each little thing that it throws at you, you know, with these old games usually. So you put in the time, you just, you, you learn when to recognize when he's going to do an attack, and then you just react accordingly. So it's really just muscle memory. But that's that's what makes these games, you know, a lot of these games really enjoyable to put together. So it's no different in that regard. And it'll give you a nice little challenge, you know. And if you're not familiar with these kind of games, it may be extremely difficult. But I think it's worth learning, you know what I mean, for, for all players that like action games. So for me, this game's a 7.5 out of 10. And I don't really have any complaints that I can level up the game, like to say why it might not be like a 10 out of 10, but it's just like, you know, how a game has a certain feel. And I feel like for me, this is like a 7.5 kind of tier game. You know what I mean? Like, it's not quite great to me, but I mean, I could see players thinking that this was on par with some of the Castlevania games, maybe even better. So that's kind of a personal thing. But if you have any questions, let me know. And thanks for watching.